So hey guys, I'm so excited that we have a ton of people on this call and this is going to be an amazing call. We have April on here who's going to talk to us about being a leader and some things you can do to step up and show your leadership that you have the potential of, of doing. So I'm pretty sure you guys recognize this face. You've seen some videos that I've shared with you guys from April and you know who she is. But for those of you who don't know, April is a registered, I want to make sure I say this right, clinical exercise physiologist. Okay, <laughs> she has, um, she, when she signed up as a coach, she had $7 to her name, and she's the infamous $7 story that we share. Um, she has, her husband is a two-star because she works his business, so she's technically five-star, but right now she's a three-star in her business. She has, she's also a 10, a Success Club 10 all-star. And she has paid for her wedding in cash, quit her job, retired her husband from his job. So she's done some pretty amazing things. So I'm not going to take all the spotlight away from you. I'm going to let you go and uh, share what you have. So if you can just, I guess, unmute yourself, April. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Carolyn. And thank you so much for um, inviting me to um, talk and appreciate you guys taking time out of your schedule um, and jumping on too. So I am at my in-laws right now and they're out car shopping. So there's a chance that they may come in anytime. And if that happens, I'll just take you with me <laughs> into the room, uh, another room, but um, just a heads up. But, um, and that's just kind of really one of the coolest things about this business. I just kind of made a post um, about that and I'll kind of talk a little bit about um, some different ways that I talk about sharing the opportunity too, but you know, it's not just about, Hey, if you're interested in joining me, you know, reach out and message me. Um, I just, I call it my hashtag best job ever, um, kind of post. And I always tell my girls, you know, make a, make a best job ever post because <laughs> I always use the same hashtag and they use it too. It's just kind of like, you know, what are you grateful for this, um, you know, for this business? Like, what does this business do for you? And if you find yourself being like, I love this business because that's a perfect way to, you know, make a post about it because it's not just um, the cut and dry. If you want to join my challenge group, message me. If you want to be a coach, message me. Um, you just need to be consistent about it and finding other ways to kind of sneak it in so that when people um, talk to me after I've been like inviting them and stuff, they're always like, you seem like you love your job so much and I'm, because of all those best job ever posts that I make. And that's totally the truth. I mean, I'm like, I do love my job. So, um, you know, I'm here at my in-laws. We were at the beach last weekend until Monday. Um, it didn't really have to be like, Hey, I need time off work. I was still able to answer my messages, um, and things like that. And one of the really, um, huge reasons that has taken so much stress off of me, you know, if I do travel or if I am going to be gone and, you know, kind of taking a step back in my business is I've really taught my team how to be leaders um, themselves also. And um, I'm sorry, my hair is so gross. I keep looking at it and playing with it. I just need to put it up. <laughs> um, and so um, another perk to the job, it doesn't matter <laughs> what you look like or how long it's been since you washed your hair. Um, but, you know, I, t I kind of told my team, like, hey, I'm going to be at the beach. Um, you know, if you see questions in our team page, please step up and help each other out. And I really um, want to talk to you today about team leadership and yourself being a leader as well. It doesn't matter if you're a new coach. Um, you kind of have to adapt that leadership mindset because you are not going to be able to do everything yourself. If I just wanted to be the leader of my team so I could say, hey, look at me. I'm the leader. Let me do this, 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 and this. I don't know if you can do it as good as I can, so I'm going to do it all, and then you just can you just can learn from me, but, but I'm going to continue to do it all. That would never work, and I would never get anything done. I wouldn't add new people to my um, contact list. I wouldn't be able to do any new training for my coaches because I would be doing it all myself. Um, so one of my the coolest things to see is that now um, I'm at a point where if I'm gone and people are posting in my group, I know there's a ton of other successful coaches in there that are going to be able to answer their questions and things like that. I, when I was first starting, I felt like I have to be here to answer this question. I have to be here to answer this because what if this coach tries to sign on another coach and I'm not there? Um, and that's why you really teach your team, look, you need to use the team page because one, I'm not available 24 seven. I have a life just as you do. And two, when you post things in that group, other new coaches are going to learn from it. And then you may get lots of different, you know, 
perspectives. One person may say it a little different than another person and one way may just really resonate with you. So my biggest thing that I stress to my team is use that team group. Don't come to me with a message that's super simple that you could have asked in the group or Googled. Um, and I'm never ever coming across as like, no, I'm too busy. Don't message me. But you know, I'm not going to answer a phone call to somebody that isn't scheduled. If they just randomly call me and are like, I need that 21 day fix script or that 21 day fix challenge pack link. Can you send it to me? No, I, I am about to probably jump on a call or do something else. I'm not going to answer the phone for that. So, um, I mean, if you send me like an SOS message or something, I'm not going to ignore any of your messages, but I really need you to kind of adapt that too. You don't, you're not maybe new now as a new coach, you can give a lot more time to your coaches, but you want to kind of establish that, um, I don't even, that atmosphere that this is a team. So post in our team group so everybody can help you. I'm not going to be able to be available to you 24 seven. So everybody else can learn from you too. And that's kind of something that's really helped me so much so that I'm not like, Oh my gosh, this coach doesn't know how to sign on. I have to stop eating dinner with my family because what if they don't do it right? And then we have to fix it. Da, da, da. Um, and I never want you to feel like you're a slave to your phone. Um, in the beginning, you obviously are trying to build clientele and, and things like that, but you need to set, hours that you're working. I did not used to do this. I used to be on my phone all the time when I was, you know, whether I was at my work job or not. Um, and I remember one time it really resonated with me because my husband said, I am not going to watch another movie by myself. So either put your phone down and we watch this or I'll go back to playing my video games. And I was like, Oh my gosh. And like, that was the first time. And like, you know, men don't usually just say, you know, they're not like women where they're like, nah, 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 nah. they think about things. And so it had to be a thing that something that was really brewing with him a while for him to even say something. And so that was like a really big wake up call to me. And we've, we've still thought a couple of times about it, but this um, past couple of months, I've really been really strategic with planning out my hours and you know, whether it's a significant other or whether it's your family, you know, you're not going to don't like go to lunch with your grandma and be sitting there like on your phone. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like be a real person and care about relationships and realize that it's not like somebody's going to be like, oh, they didn't answer me. I'm going to go find another beach body coach. And if they do, that's not somebody you want to work with. So don't worry about it. Um, so that, those are just some of the, the big points that I'm kind of wanting to go across. But what I want to talk to you about why being a leader is um, I have my coaches decide, th start thinking about their own team names once they're Emerald. And I have a lot of people that think like, isn't that weird? Like, don't you want them to be part of your team? Don't you want your team name to get out there? It's not about me. It's about my team, our team growing and them turning into leaders. Um, Oh my gosh, my husband's like screaming, playing video games in the other room. Sorry. <laughs> um, but I want them to really, truly feel like leaders and not that, oh, it's April's team. Oh, it's April's team. Oh, I don't know. It's April's team. So I, I encourage them to one, think of a team name, um, once they're Emerald and make a team group once they're Emerald. I don't care if it's you and your mom and your cousin that's underneath you make a team group. Um, because then anything that you think is, you know, worth sharing, you can make sure you post it in there so that these, they see if you, you talk to your upline and you've learned something new or you watch a um, personal development and you you're like, Oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. You share it in your team group. And it's, it doesn't have to be like, I'm not going to start that. Cause then I have to move over all the files. I have to do this. I have to do this. Make a team page. Think of your team name. If you're undecided, just, you know, you can pick something for now and change it later. Um, add the people that are in there and maybe just every day make an accountability post like, okay, post on this post. Um, you know, once you've sent out your three invites, once you've done your workout and drink your Shakeology and did your personal development, it doesn't have to be something that you're doing something, you know, consistently, but just something like that. Maybe you can just do an accountability where you're just kind of success partners. It doesn't matter if you're a brand new coach. It doesn't matter if you're a diamond coach. Um, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, I don't have time for this. I say do it because that to you says, I am a leader. I got this. That's changing your mindset. And then it tells your coaches like, this is our team and they're still a part of Carolyn's team and they're still a part of Kelly's team. But that just tells them like, it's kind of cool to have like pride in your team, you know? And, um, my team, my coaches do their own calls too. And I don't get mad that, 
you know, I don't see them popping up on my team call because I usually always listen to Kelly's recording. It's not that I don't want to be a part of her team calls, but I just Monday nights at eight just don't work for me. So I always listen to, um, her recording. So it's not that I, anybody looks at you and like, Oh, you know, I don't want them to do my team call. Cause what if they're not listening to my team call? I say, good. If you're going to grow and become a leader, that's amazing. Um, and so you kind of just, that's another thing where you kind of just have to let it go. It's not something that you want to try to control and, you know, I want to be the leader. Um, but as soon as you see, start seeing yourself as a leader, I, that's when like magical things um, start happening. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is you need to make sure that you are stepping up and taking part in challenge groups and, and things like that and making sure that Carolyn or your leader isn't the one doing everything either. Um, because the more that you take part in things and the more that, you know, you show up in challenge groups and things like that, your customers and clients are going to see that and see also look at you, excuse me, as a leader, whether it be a free group, whether it be a paid group, the more that you can interact as well um, is awesome because you want to make sure that you're stepping up because one day you're going to need to do that. So the time is now. Um, and then the more that you interact and understand how to do that, the sooner you'll be able to do that on your own. Uh, we do a team-wide challenge group. And then after the first month, we, I did a test group um, where it was just me and my personally sponsored coaches and then new coaches from that month. And um, I kind of came up with a template. And now this month, our entire team is doing it. And I said, hey, I'm gonna, we're going to do it. I'm going to show you how I do it. And then I'll provide you with a template. And then it's up to you. I don't care if you want to team up with another coach um, or you know, somebody on your team. And then run it with you and, you know, one or two other coaches, but just your clients. But I need you to do that because we were just doing an ongoing group and it just got so old and um, people were kind of falling off the face of the earth. But it really works if you're doing a new group every month and kind of keeping it really intimate with like your clients and maybe another coach and their clients and the interaction. It's small. It's personal. And the interaction is awesome. So get in the habit of starting your own challenge group. It's not hard, um, especially, you know, Carolyn already has templates and stuff and, you know, Beachbody's online on their website, they have templates that you can tweak. The sooner that you start seeing yourself as a leader though, the sooner that you're going to start treating this business like a business and not a hobby. Um, so definitely do that. I've had a lot of success from that. Um, and it's so much easier to keep track of your clients in just your personal group versus like a team wide group that's ongoing. There's like 800 people in there. Um, let's see. Oh, because when you do that, it frees up your, you know, Carolyn's time. If you, when my girls do that, I am so appreciative of that because that gives me more time to focus on training. That gives me more time to focus on, on creating documents or scripts or things that's going to help them or videos or, you know, things like that. So, uh, the more that you can step up, the more that your team is just going to grow because one person cannot do it all. There is no I whatsoever in coach. There's just not, there's it, you cannot do this business by yourself. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to continue to do it and help each other out. Um, oh, okay. The, the best thing that you can do too is see all of your downline as your coaches, not just your coaches. And then be like, I don't know, it's your coach. Figure it out. Like anybody in your downline, see them just as your coach. Like the, my business changed. Kelly told me, um, beginning of 2015, she said, the best advice I can give you is treat your coaches, coaches like your coaches. And that is so true. I start getting on the phone with my coaches, coaches. I start doing three-way Zooms. Um, if I have a coach that's like, Hey, I've got this coach and she's really trying and like things just aren't clicking. Um, so yesterday, yesterday morning, I got on the phone with one of my coach and two of her coaches. Um, tomorrow I'm getting on the phone with a coach and one of her new coaches who literally I feel like is doing all the three vital behaviors. She's t doing our coach basics and she's not making sales and she's putting in the effort. And I know there's a disconnect somewhere and I don't know where it is. So that for me, I'm like, absolutely. Like, let's get on the phone. If it was somebody that maybe, you know, wasn't doing the three vital behaviors, I'm not going to drop everything for that person. I'm going to say, okay, yeah, go to my schedule. Let's pick a time. Um, so I really do focus more on the people that are working and give them precedence over that, but I'm still going to help any coach or their coach's coach um, that wants it. I'm not just going to be like, oh, you don't know, you don't know what you're doing? Yeah, set up a call with me um, anytime. You don't, you don't have three calls this week? No, I'm not going to do that. Um, I do want to make sure that it's somebody that's investing their time, um, but you never know. I mean, that call with somebody that's, you know, being flaky 
may really, something may resonate in them to turn their business around. So um, I always am doing three ways. And then what I tell them to do too is a new coach. So I had a new coach last month that she was brand new and she was talking, somebody actually posted on her, like one of her challenge group posts or her welcome posts or something. And she was commenting and I was commenting back and forth with her. And I saw, I was like, Oh my gosh, Tasha, you have to ask her about coaching. She seems like an awesome um, potential. And so then I, she's like, okay. And then she started a three-way um, Facebook chat and then we started talking and then we, um, I kind of said, complimented her and said how awesome I thought she would be at coaching. And then we set up a three-way Zoom call. And I mean, this chick was so funny. She was literally like, okay, yeah, I'm actually free now if you want. And so I was free. This chick is like walking around Walmart doing a Zoom call with me. I'm like, this is determination. This chick needs to sign up right now. She doesn't care what the people of Walmart think of her. We need her on our team. Um, and so she actually signed up and then she's, um, she's now talking to a coach and she started a, um, a four way chat with her coach, Tasha, who's also a new coach, me and that coach, that, um, coach potential. So I'm totally fine with that. I want to show you how to do it. I want to teach you, um, as I'm going. And then it, it just created such a great kind of you know, practice that I know that Tasha is going to continue to do that with her coaches because she saw that it worked. And that is teaching. Yes, it takes a little bit of time on my part, but it's teaching my coaches how I do it exactly. They can see firsthand and then they, you know, then you kind of cut ties. I'm not going to do this for you for the year, first year you're a coach. I mean, I'll give you a month or two, but then you got to do it on your own. So it's a really cool practice to start doing. Um, it gives them confidence too, because then they don't have to be like, Oh my gosh, I just signed on as a coach last week. I don't think I can do this. So you're like, I got it. I'll take, I'll talk, I'll do most of the talking. You just chime in, um, when you feel comfortable. So that has been something that's totally changed my business. Um, I, the group Zooms are amazing. I know Carolyn adapts this a lot. Zooms change everything. When you first get on the phone with people, um, Zooms are so much more personal right then and there. Because a lot of my clients or coaches come from Instagram. So that it is almost a disconnect. Like I love them, but I don't really feel like I truly know them because I don't know what their voice sounds like, you know, or I, you know, I don't know what kind of facial expressions they make, you know, when they're talking, things like that, you really get to know your team. And I mean, your team becomes family. So I just say make zoom calls with new coach prospects, um, non-negotiable because you're obviously a good person. You wouldn't be on Carolyn's team if you're not people see that awesome personality come through and they're like, dude, I want to be a part of this girl's team, you know? Um, and don't treat it like a freaking business, you know, um, interview, just be yourself. I, um, you know, I am very laid back. I'm just myself. You want people to connect with you. So just be you. Um, when I'm actually looking at people on Instagram and I like their posts and stuff, I, I literally say like, Oh my gosh, girl, I just stalked the poop out of you. I feel like we would be BFFs. Are you on Facebook? Cause I would love to, to chat more. And you know, I even use like the poop emoji. Like I don't care. Like I want people that aren't going to think I don't want to send out like a cheesy, like, Hey, I'm running a three week, uh, fitness and accountability group. I'd love for you to add me on Facebook. Um, that's so annoying. No, I don't even, what is an accountability group? I don't even know what that is. No. Do you know my name? You know, like I want people to connect with you and people oftentimes block, you know, or report spammy comments like that. So just make sure that you're going through and doing that five, three, one message where, you know, you like five photos, you comment, um, on three photos and then you usually get a fo one follow back. So, um, I, I do that. And a lot of people I connect with are, are from those passions and hobbies that I really connect with. So, um, one girl I can have been connecting with this week has a German shepherd and, um, is really goofy and funky. Like the first, first photo that I commented on was her doing, um, what is it called? It's like teeth whitening, the active charcoal or whatever that's called. And she was like making like smiling with her toothbrush and her face and her teeth are all black and stuff. I was like, Oh my gosh, I love this girl for posting this picture. Um, you know, and I went through and I saw that she lost one of her dogs last month and the other, do another dog had to have a toe removed and she was worried it was cancerous. Like we had a literally like heart to heart conversation just from somebody I met on Instagram and, you know, asked her to add me on Facebook. And I already feel like I have such a connection with this woman because I've been touched so much by her story. So you know, post about those things that you're interested in and interact with people. You know, mine is, you know, I always talk, I always talk, I always talk about, talk about um, like a, a big, like hopeless romantic kind of person. I connect with people with, you know, that are in 
relationships. I, um, you know, Chipotle, guacamole, silly stuff like that. And anything that makes me laugh, like you're instantly my best friend because humor is just so important to me. So those are the kind of people that I try to connect with. So figure that out, what your passions or hobbies are, figure out those hashtags and um, search them and use them and interact with people like that because those are the kind of people that you want on your team. Um, you know, I really try to, I really attract a lot of people that are just kind of silly and goofy and weird. And I would, would literally, when you try to like figure out like, what is the team dynamic that we have? Um, we've decided that we're just a bunch of weirdos and that's basically what our team is consisted of. And I think that's funny. Like, I love that it's, um, what is the common denominator? You know, you have some coaches that they're, you know, Lindsay Matway, like, oh, most of them are blonde and like little models. And, you know, then you, I've seen a couple of big coaches that are like, they're all really into Disney. And that's like one of her, the ways she connects people. And I'm just like, I have a bunch of weirdos and I'm weird. And that's apparently how I attracted them. So I just think that's funny um, to kind of put yourself out there with whatever kind of passions and hobbies. And those are the kind of people that you're going to attract. Um, let's see. Okay, and then the another thing, um, I've just kind of been all over the place. Sorry, I, I have notes and I'm just not sticking to them. <laughs> I'm just saying whatever comes to my mind. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is what I teach coaches and when they turn emerald. Um, because my process of talking and training coaches when they're new versus when they're emerald is very different because when they're new, I'm very much so involved. I know um, exactly who they're talking to. I know who they're talking to about what. I am like, okay, so how, where is Betsy at? I know she was interested in the 21 day fix. You know, she's the one with gastric bypass. You know, where is she at? What was her last conversation that you guys had? Like literally things like that. I know these conversations because when I get on the phone or when I'm talking to them, I'm like, okay, who are the two people you're talking to right now? What's their story? Um, you know, because I want to know what they're talking to them about, because if I can help them better than I'm going to, like, um, today I had, I was talking to one of my coaches and she was like, oh, well, I have a girl that wants, she wants to start, but she's got this huge, really intense test. She has to pass or she won't, can, she won't be able to keep her job because they merged with another company. And I said, okay, well, I can understand her not coaching, but why would you, why, why would she not start the 21 day fix challenge pack? So she can try 21 day fix. She can try the workouts and she can try the shakeology and she can already have a before and after by the time she starts coaching. And she's like, I never thought of that, you know? So that's why I play such a um, close relationship with my new coaches. I want to be able to tell them, you know, um, exactly what I would say to somebody. And as a new coach, you, you, it takes a long time to figure out things. I mean, you're always still learning. I'm still learning things. So when you can have that conversation, you say, what's her deal? Why does she want to do it? What is she interested in? What is she struggling with? That's where I can really help them and give them ideas. She had another couple women, two women that were pregnant. She's like, well, I gotta wait till after they have the baby. And I was like, well, you did see the beach body on demand, right? That they have the you know, the new, um, there's four workouts, um, on demand just for first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, and, um, post baby. I said, get on there, do those workouts, post a minute video of each and, um, make sure you tag them in them and start talking to them about that. Um, so even if they may, they're pregnant, um, but it's still an option for them to be able to be like, Oh, that's awesome. It comes out in December. I can't wait for that either. You know, if they're in my third trimester or, um, during, after baby. So, um, I, she was like, Oh, that's such a great idea. And you know, your, your upline is going to be able to help you with things like that. So don't make them have to like pull teeth to get things out of you. Just kind of feel free to run things by them or just put a post it in the group. Like, Hey, I have a girl that she said, no, this is what's going on. You know, do you have any suggestions? And feel, and the more that you do that, the more that you're going to learn to grow testimonials, you know, um, I have a, I know two coaches. Well, one, my sister, um, during Shakeology, all her pregnancy, her doctor was totally, uh, for it. I had another girl that I know from Charlotte actually, that is a coach and her doctor loved Shakeology so much. She was only, she, he said, drink Shakeology every day and all you have to take is folic acid. He didn't even have her take prenatal vitamins. So I'm never going to say like, Hey, this person did this. So this is what you can do. Obviously you always talk to your doctor, but just knowing those little testimonials is you can be like, Oh yeah, it totally is. And you know, my my sister drank it all through her pregnancy. Obviously, always talk to your doctor, you know, um, but I know plenty of women that have, and I actually have a couple um, breastfeeding mamas that have said that it's helped with their milk production too. Like little samples like that. I'm not a mom. I don't know this crap. So I talk to people and get testimonials and I'm able to talk to other people. Um, so always be sharing testimonials that you find with your team too. If you find out a cool tip, 
don't just keep it for yourself. Tell your other team. It's going to help them when they're talking to somebody too. Um, again, breastfeeding was so far off what I was supposed to be talking about right now. Um, okay, we'll end in 10 minutes. Um, the other thing is once you're Emerald, you need to be checking your sponsorship drill down. I say three times a week, um, definitely on Wednesday, definitely on Sunday. Um, I mean, I check it every day, but I, I would say at least three times a week and definitely Sunday and Wednesday because um, that's going to give you time to make sure if you have somebody that's going inactive yet you can message them because you can lose your Emerald like that. If somebody has a return or if you're one of your coaches decides, Oh, I don't have, I have too much Shakeology. I don't want to drink it this month. What I tell them is we'll freaking drink two a day and you'll save money on groceries. What are you doing girl? It's like birth control. It doesn't work if you're not drinking it every day. Um, and so you can, you know, go, have that conversation. Maybe they're like, Oh, my friend gave me a bag and you're like, well, drink too, you know, things like that. Um, I'm very upfront with people. I'm like, I don't, if you're not drinking your Shakeology, then you're not, you're doing yourself a disservice. And how are you going to get other people to drink it too? So I'm very upfront with people. Um, that's just my personality. I'm going to tell you how it is, but everything I do and say um, is with love because it, we really do have a close team dynamic. Um, I'm always telling them how thankful I am for them. And I'm always giving them, um, recognition. That's actually what I'm going to talk about in the Dash to Diamond group tomorrow um, is team recognition because it's so important for me to know that my coaches know that they're appreciative be, or appreciated because I would not be here if it wasn't for my coaches. If I was just selling challenge packs, I would not be able to quit my job. And um, so that is really something that's important for you as an Emerald coach. If somebody sells a challenge pack, I'm, I'm throwing their name of praise in the group. Um, just tonight, I'm always sharing good posts too. Like, oh, go check out, you know, so-and-so just shared her story. She's awesome. Um, one of my coaches has an amazing like page. She has so much interaction. And so I shared her like page in our team group and I'm like, uh, high five to Ashley because her like page is killing it. Go check her out. She's so real. Take notes, um, you know, and things like that. So the more that you can just uplift people, they're like, okay, cool. I'm doing this right. Even if they're not making sales, it doesn't have to be just, you know, when they sell challenge packs that gives them, you know, kind of like, oh, this is awesome. Okay, cool. She, I, I'd never get this at my real job. Um, Another really th helpful thing that I've started doing is I have um, started taking screenshots of the conversations I have with people. When I go for no, when I'm, you know, I know you guys are doing that bubble pop challenge. I love that, Carolyn. That's awesome. Um, when I go for no and I'm talking to people, I screenshot how I go in for that invite. And um, then I post it in an album. I have two albums. One is conversations about Shakeology and products. And one is conversations about inviting people to coaches. And I just take screenshots and I put them in there. Um, and so that coaches would say that that's really helpful for them kind of figuring out how to ask people, how to invite people without coming across super salesy. Um, and I encourage them to add their photos to that as well. Um, another thing is, is making a video every day, whether it's short and sweet to your team group. Um, you know, today I just made a quick post about how to go for the ask. Uh, I literally probably make a video four or five days a week. It's super short and simple. I know my coaches have busy stuff. They're doing dash to diamond too, but I don't want to, the personal development that I'm doing, I always take something away from that. And I want to share that with them. Um, let's see. Your mom oh, and the last thing I wanted to tell you too was your momentum drives your team's momentum. So if you're like, I don't want to do beach body today, well, your team is probably not going to really want to do beach body. And maybe one day won't make a difference. But if you're like, haven't showed up in your team page for a week or you haven't, you know, done anything beach body related, your team is going to fall off the face of the earth too. If you're not, if your momentum isn't flowing, your team is going to be like, well, okay, I don't really have to do this today either. So um, if you're like, upset, you know, that your team isn't doing it, doing great. You probably need to take a look at yourself and say, was I being consistent? Was I posting? Was I encouraging them? Was I posting in our group? So, um, I wanted to leave, leave more time for questions, but I'm going to stop now so I can have some people, um, pop on. Sorry. I talked a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all these takeaways for whether you're a leader or if you're just starting, there's like so many things you can take away from this call and I'll definitely be watching the recording and taking notes again. So thank you so much for being on the call. But if anyone has any questions, I don't want to take time either. So we'll get those in. <laughs> questions for April? No questions? Somebody's got to have a question.
It can be about anything too. It doesn't even have to be about what we talked about today because I just talked out of my butt a little bit about everything. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. <It's> okay. <laughs> Nobody. Um, is there anybody currently struggling with anything with like a conversation or you're feeling like you're stuck when you're talking to people about anything? Amber looks like, Amber, you got to unmute yourself. There you go. Um, for me, sometimes on Instagram, um, maybe people aren't responding to my messages. So um, I guess, Carolyn, you said just uh, write in the comments, um, hey, I DM'd you. Yeah, you could always do that. I actually don't really direct message, but I do have a coach that's really successful with direct messaging. Um, Honestly, I didn't even know how to text direct messages until like probably six months ago. So sometimes people just don't know um, what that is. So I would just make your comments um, on their post. So like the 531, I'm making comments on their post, but it's not just like, good job, girl. Like ask engaging questions like who, what, where, why. Like if I'm, I'm a big runner. So if I look at people's like um, running posts or something, I'm like, oh my gosh, your time was amazing. You killed it, girl. Um, how did you feel during the race? You know, things like that. So I'm going to have ask them questions that they require to say something other than like, thank you. Um, so that you can kind of get some type of engaging conversation going and kind of go through their stuff. And if you really like what they're saying, comment on a bunch of things. And then I literally just like, I'll be like, Okay, I'm, I just stalked the crap out of you. Are you on Facebook? Because I'd love to chat. I feel like we'd be BFFs. That's exactly what I say. And they're like, oh my gosh, yes. How about you now? I did that to three people and three people added me to Facebook today. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, it's getting better. It's getting better. Um, people are responding more. But um, after you talk to them on Facebook, how, how long do you wait before you mention anything about Beachbody? Okay, so what I do really quickly, I get them into a free, I, I talk to them, hey, thanks so much for adding me, how are you, tell me a little bit about you, what do you do, da da da, I form them, and then I say, well, it was so good to chat, thank you so much for adding, um, I actually have, a, I gotta get going, but I actually have a free exercise group I'd love to add you to, uh, we're just doing, this month we're doing our arms and abs, just a couple extra minutes um, each day, so are you interested in me adding you, I'd love to keep each other accountable. They're usually like, yes, if they say no, I'm like, what's wrong with this person usually? And I'm just like, okay, whatever. But nobody, they don't usually say no. So I get them added. And then my next process is in a couple of days and I make the next day I'm going to make a post and tag, you know, a couple of my people in there and say, how are you doing? And then in like three days or something, I'm going to reach out to them again. And I'm going to say, Hey, how's it going? Oh my gosh. I had to do three days worth today. I'm such a schmuck. Um, so sore. How are you doing? And then I start going and I talk to them about their goals. I talk to them about their struggles. Um, and then I start using the 21 day fix script and I say, well, that's an awesome goal. You totally can, you know, lose 30 pounds. I, I, you know, I can totally vouch for that. You know, I've got a friend that's, that's doing it with me right now and she's, um, down X pounds or whatever. I don't know if you're interested or not, but I have a three week fitness and nutrition boot camp starting. And I would just, I think it would really help you with your struggle of X, Y, Z to reach your goal of X, Y, Z. Would you want more info? Um, okay. And that's usually what I do. Thank you. Uh -huh. So, okay. We have like less than a minute, so you're probably getting off. <laughs> Well, and Amber, you can use the free group that we have to do that. Like the group, I actually did that to you. I added you to that group and I did exactly what April had said when I was talking to you. So we do have a group that you can add people to and it's the um, food, fun and fitness group that we have. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. So I'll add people today. All right. Awesome. Sometimes I feel like they feel like you have like a modem, a motive to talk to them. I want to. So you, I think okay. that gives you an in to talk to them because you've added free value without looking at them like a paycheck. So you get them into the free group and then it's another conversation later. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good night. You're welcome. You too. Bye, Carolyn. Thank you. Bye, April. Thank you again. I don't know when we're going to lose this. So I appreciate you being on the call and I know everyone has a lot of notes to go over after this call. So thank you so much for being here and I will see you tomorrow on your call. <laughs> oh yeah. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good night, girl. Thanks again. Bye. Bye guys. Bye.